Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra and today we're going to be talking about some inconvenient historical facts and I will share my opinions along the way. Most of you have already begun to deprogram yourself from the world in one way or another. But since some of the things I'll be discussing today are touchy subjects, I have to disable the comments. I was super nervous. Oh, right, I'm about to put it on YouTube. Where people are just mean to be mean. And I'm really sorry that I have to censor myself with what I say, so I will just be putting the words on the screen and just using different terms in general so that I won't get flagged by the bots. Like how sometimes using certain words and comments can also do. Let me say something. Maybe out of line. But... Oh yeah, no, please. Yeah, it's a free country. I mean, sort of. So here is a cheat sheet for the words that I'll be using instead of the words that might get me taken down. Brotherman, brothers, and brother manry. The establishment. Z's, J's, and NZ's. Everything else I will just put in front of my face when I talk. I've left links to the things that I discussed in the description below. This is gonna be a long one, so hold on to your stress toys. We're gonna talk about apostate churches. We're gonna talk about widely held beliefs that are not based on the Bible, but are based on something else entirely. We're gonna get into the New Age, the establishment's plans, and the history of indoctrination and infiltration, and oh so much more, dear friend. While this video is for those who follow the word of God, or yeah, if you do not believe in God, you may discover that everything you've ever been taught about him is wrong. So be warned. I personally do not follow any religion or church. I have just found over the years of research that the truths in the Bible hold up. All right, friends. So how inconvenient is our history? Let's find out. We're gonna build a chart together to unlock as we go. This chart will show how everything connects. Let's start at the top. Godrail, the architect behind it all. In the first book of Enoch, in chapter 69, verse 6, it discusses the angels who came down to earth and says, And the third was named Godrail. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Eve, and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail, and the sword for battle, and all the weapons of death to the children of men. Do we get it? He's kind of a murderer. And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore. You see, the suffix for the name Godrael is important because El means of God. Lucifer is simply a Latin description, not a name. While teaching at the temple, Yahusha, or Jesus Christ, confirms the traits of Godrael, Lucifer, when condemning the Pharisees. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Whoa, 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 the father of lies? Isn't that kind of harsh? Yeah, well, not when you consider everything he's corrupted. It's basically like Lucifer steezed and contaminated the entire world. In the Garden of Eden, there were many trees, but only one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, was forbidden by Yah, or God. In the beginning was the truth and the warning against false doctrines from the father of lies. From this tree comes everything within our fallen world. The lie told in the Garden of Eden is the same lie being told today. So atop this chart sits Godrail, Lucifer, the dragon, the great architect of the universe, and so on. He has many names. Lucifer and the other fallen angels were responsible for the teachings Yah warned about in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 2.17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. The Watchers had no problem getting a quick start to educating humanity with the wisdom, which is now concealed in our second point on the chart, BAM! Kabbalah! The Zohar, Kabbalah, the Talmud, Jayish mysticism. These are the foundation of the fallen world and the forbidden tree. What is the exoteric or the mundane meaning of Kabbalah? An article from the Brother Man New Age magazine on brotherman.com, written in 1950 by a 32nd degree brother man, Rabbi H. Geffen, says that Kabbalah is a knowledge of divine wisdom. This truth is the foundation stone upon which the regenerating and saving portion of every true religion is based. 
Did you catch that? Their truth is the, quote, foundation stone, the base of every, quote, true religion. Most Christians assume the foundation stone they mention is Jesus, but it's not. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. These builders or brothers rejected Jesus. Their foundation stone has a big G on it for Godrael. Remember, Godrael means builder of God or mason of God. From the beginning, the Rosicrucians and Brothermen employed Jayish mysticism and Jayish Kabbalistic magic. Rabbi Geffen gives us some more interesting information. Our brother man's spiritual allegories are based on the Kabbalah, which is known to us moderns as the Kabbalistic doctrine. It must therefore be well understood that the Torah thus mentioned by the Talmud is not the written, but the oral law or the Kabbalah, transmitted by tradition from generation to generation until collected by Simon ben Yoshai and preserved in the volume of the Zohar. The systems of the Kabbalah and esoteric brother manry are identical. And for this reason, the brothers call their temple the Temple of Solomon. All the brother ceremonies have a Kabbalistic base. Let me be clear. Jesus as the Messiah is incompatible with Kabbalah. Kabbalah sees Jesus as an intermediary between the soul and God, which they believe to be a mental construct. Kabbalah is thought to clear away this veil of separation. God is unknowable, void of love, and empty, yet you're supposed to find peace and oneness in that. In that sense, Buddhism and Kabbalah both pursue the same end and the same insight. So the Kabbalah and the Zohar are the fundamental books that most occult, magic, and satanic groups base their activities on. The Zohar is a group of books that are mystical commentary on the first five books of the Bible. So when you can't destroy the truth, commentate on it so that the original message is lost. The books include scriptural interpretations, theosophic theology, mystical cosmogony, and mystical psychology. All of those should raise red flags, but regarding theosophic theology, according to theosophy, the God of the Bible is a tyrant, and Lucifer is the one who came to rescue mankind from him. The Talmudic Pharisees had Jesus killed physically, and the Talmud, along with the Kabbalah and the Zohar, continues to metaphorically kill him in the hearts and minds of people every day. The most powerful governments, companies, medias, and businesses were infiltrated long ago by men who were adept in the occult knowledge of these books. The lie spoken in the Garden of Eden is the origin of all mystery religions. Lucifer is the father of Gnosticism. Gnosticism equates to salvation through knowledge. Quote, illuminated or enlightened people use what they call the force. Gnosticism believes that there is a force that can be used for evil or good. Satan represents the use of the evil side where Lucifer represents the good. But to me, this perfectly represents that this isn't good versus evil. This is bad versus evil. This force describes the two beasts of Revelation 13, the first and the second. White and black, light and dark. This force is the opposite of God. In 1 John 1, 5, it says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. The mystery religion started again after the flood with the builder Nimrod in Babylon. But after God confused their languages, people didn't stop worshiping their false gods. And the result was that the name of Nimrod became Osiris in Egypt, Mithras in Persia, and so on. The mystery religions morphed into Egyptian paganism, rabbinic Jaism, Greek mythology, Hinduism, brother manry, and the New Age. The gods of all these different cultures had all the same characteristics and attributes. They just had different names. The Pharisees from Jesus' day practiced the mystery religions in the Kabbalah. These Pharisees perverted the faith and hoped people had in a coming Messiah, which is why the people didn't realize Jesus was the fulfillment of their prophecies. This is still happening, but we'll get into some of that later. The mystery religions have been rebranded and repackaged for the masses today as the New Age. And these teachings have made their way into the Christian churches through very well thought out strategies to infiltrate churches and spread disinformation and lies using the brother men. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look at the many branches that have come out of Kabbalah. Brother men. I am specifically talking about the esoteric traditions and the high ranking members. Not the misled masses or members who are deliberately lied to by their higher-ups and who have no esoteric knowledge and haven't done any research into their own organization. The same thing happens in all institutions. Work, school, church. 
the masses are not part of the elite leadership. Within occult organizations like Brother Manry, there are two levels of plants, the exoteric and the esoteric. Within the organizations, there are also light and dark paths. At the lower levels, the initiates are given exoteric information. They're told things like the G stands for God or geometry. As the initiate progresses through the ranks, they are given more esoteric knowledge, if they are deemed worthy to know it by their higher ranking members. Brother men, like churchgoers, are usually left on an exoteric basis, never knowing the true core, history, or agenda of the religion or organization they're a part of. Before even being considered a candidate, the prospective brother has to complete a form asking to be initiated into the mysteries. A poem from 1723 written in London called The Brothers, a hudibrastic poem, tells the truth about the founding of Brother Manry. One line says, If history be not ancient fable, brother men came from the Tower of Babel. Brother Man's history can be traced from Nimrod to Solomon to the Pharisees, then throughout Europe where it was built on by secret societies like these as well as the mystery religions like Mazdain to Mithraism, like witchcraft, Plutonic humanists, and philosophers. Years after Nimrod, Ezekiel 8, 15 through 16 seems to describe a brother man meeting of the tribe of Judah. Then he said to me, have you seen this, O son of man? You will see still greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord, and behold, at the entrance of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs to the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, worshipping the sun towards the east. Satanism requires its initiates to go through brother manry, since it teaches the symbology and thought process of the mystery religions. Not all high-ranking brothers are Satanists, but all high-ranking Satanists are brothers. According to the Jayish Chronicle dated December 20th of 1867, Jayism is Brother Manry and Brother Manry is Jayism. If all roads led back to an Amazon tribe or the Irish or the Swedish, I would be talking about them. But an honest researcher or historian has to admit that there's always a connection to these people. Israel de Lieben, Emmanuel de la Mata, Abraham Alexander, who was a rabbi, and Moses Levy were original founders of the Mother Supreme Council Scottish Rite in South Carolina and Charleston. Today, the original site of the Mother Supreme Council is commemorated by this marker where a bank now stands. Hezekiah Levy, a J brother, was one of the first members of the Fredericksburg Lodge No. 4, the lodge President George Washington joined. Benjamin Franklin is a famous J brother and Rosicrucian. He was the founder of the American Philosophical Society and became the head of the very occultic Grand Orient Brothermen when he was in France. Lucifer's mischaracterization of God gave birth to all religions. He took the first truth and inverted it. He's the good guy and God is the bad guy. At the core of all mystery religions, God is evil and Lucifer is the light bearer of freedom. Yeah, the thing is, uh, truth is not a religion. God, the creator, equals truth, and the truth is always true. You don't get to pick and choose truth. You can choose your characterization of it. There are facts which are true, unchangeable. Our characterization of these facts is where we get our opinions, stances, and thoughts about them. Again, opinions don't change facts. A fact is there are powerful organizations running the world and at the top level worship Lucifer. My characterization is that these organizations are generally bad, evil in fact, and will be dealt with by the judge the most high. Others characterize Lucifer as a hero, but nothing changes the facts. Someone who picked and chose the truth was Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism. He claimed that he was given the lost keyword to the higher brother man degrees by an angel. He thought he could create a high-level super right of Brother Manry. Smith added esoteric Christianity, taught by brothers, to his new Mormon religion. He also changed Genesis to the Book of Moses that included occult, mystic Christian teachings and Gnosticism. According to the Cyclopedia of Fraternities, Brother Manry is, quote, directly or indirectly the parent of all modern secret societies, good, bad, or indifferent. In the 30th to 33rd degrees of Brother Manry, it starts to become more evident that the god of their organization is Lucifer. In the book, The Hidden Life in Brother Manry, author and theosophist Charles W. Leadbeater says, It must of course be understood 
the conferring of the higher degrees puts certain definite powers in the hands of the recipient. Later, he explains what these certain definite powers are. The 33rd degree links the Sovereign Grand Inspector General with the spiritual king of the world himself, that mightiest of adepts who stands at the head of the Great White Lodge, in whose strong hands lie the destinies of Earth, and awakens the powers of the Triple Spirit as far as they can yet be awakened. So the powers that are given at the highest degree in Brother Manry are the powers of Lucifer, the spiritual king of the world. Since I am not a brother man or an Eastern woman, I cannot say for sure what this triple spirit represents, possibly the threefold flame, or a possible reference to the three parts of consciousness, often spoken about in Gnosis. The multi-consciousness consists of the superconscious, the self-conscious, and the subconscious. These are incredibly important to programming, but that is for another day. He even explains how the brothers are given angels to work with them. The 30th degree gives the brother an angel also, a great blue diva of the first ray. He also describes gigantic angels taking over 33rd degree brothers. The 33rd degree gives two such splendid fellow workers, spirits of gigantic size as compared to humanity and radiant white in color. He then explains how certain seventh ray angels or ascended masters help out in the lodge or chapter, and that sometimes the type of angels who respond are different. This suggests a ceremonial type of high-level magic or witchcraft being performed to summon these entities. Now, these are just a few examples of many similar occult references to angelic beings being attached to brothers. If one really understands the occult or Luciferian witchcraft nature of Brother Manry, then it becomes clear why the power of the Lodge promotes the revival of the mystery religions. The religion of the fallen. Albert Pike sovereign grand commander of the Scottish Rite Southern Jurisdiction, created a highly secret occult rite called the Palladium Rite. Palladism originated in Egypt with Pythagoras and has a long secret history, and Pike was instrumental in bringing it to the Brotherman Lodges. According to the ancient and primitive rite of Memphis Misrium, Pike named the order the New and Reformed Palladian Rite. It is, in fact, Lucifer who was worshipped within this rite of Brother Manry. The holy see of the dogma for the whole brother men world was set up at Charleston, the sacred city of the Palladium. Pike, the sovereign pontiff of Lucifer, was the president of the Supreme Dogmatic Directory, composed of ten brothers of the highest grades who formed his Supreme Grand Council of Emeritus Brothers. The sovereign executive directory of high brother manry was established at Rome under Mazzini himself. The late New Age teacher, Elizabeth Clare Prophet of the Church Universal and Triumphant, stated many times that she is following orders from the Great White Brotherhood. The Great White Brotherhood is the same group that Alice Bailey, Helena Blavatsky, the Rosicrucians, and the Esoteric Brothermen follow. That's Saint Germain on the right, the Seventh Ray. The Brother book Ancient Mystic Oriental Brothery says, quote, Ancient wisdom religion is the thread soul on which are strung all the various incarnations and encasements of the religious life, begotten by that spiritual hierarchy, the Great White Brotherhood, in whose guardianship is the evolution of the human race. Brought forth from them, they, the guardians of the mystic tradition, give to those children of men who are strong enough for the burden a portion of the real teaching of the divine science, the science of the soul, concerning God and man and the wonderful relationship that exists between the two. The philosophy behind the mystery religions, Brother Manry, Theosophy, Gnosticism, and the New Age are all based on the same idea. Seek out the fruit of the tree of good and evil, for it shall make ye a god. God told Adam that if he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he would surely die. It would separate him eternally from God. But Godrael, Lucifer, told Eve that if she ate of it, her eyes would be opened and she would be as gods. The first lie ever spoken is still believed today. Everyone in history has had to confront the exact same scenario as Adam and Eve. Choose the truth of God's wisdom or choose the tree of supposed knowledge. In other words, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In 1798, Scottish scientist John Robinson wrote in his book Proofs of a Conspiracy about the various people who used Brother Men Lodges for deceitful purposes. In several places, he writes that the early lodges were used by the Jesuits. 
Side note, it takes 17 years to complete Jesuit training. At this time, also, the Jesuits took a more active hand in Brother Manry than ever. They insinuated themselves into the English lodges where they were caressed by the Catholics who panted after their re-establishment of their faith and tolerated by the Protestant royalists who thought no concession too great a compensation for their services. At this time, changes were made in some of the symbols, particularly the tracing of the lodge, which bear evident marks of Jesuitical interference. By 1860, the Grand Orient Lodges established communism, which took them one step closer in the implementation of the establishment's goals. Jayish brother Karl Marx was the leader in the creation of communism. Giuseppe Mazzini of Italy was even more influential. Mazzini and Garibaldi led a revolution in Italy and installed a brother man government. Napoleon, also a brother man, was in charge of infiltrating France. He continued the revolution in the name of liberty, equality, and fraternity, one of the most recognizable brother man phrases. Brother men controlled the Church of England, Italy, Germany, France, and other European countries in the 1800s, and through Jesuit leadership, brothers controlled the Vatican and the Catholic Church, possibly by starting the infamous P2, or Propaganda Due Lodge, in the Vatican. The P2 Lodge having ties with the Mafia, being as Mazzini was the founder of both. Most researchers have come across the information about Albert Pike and Giuseppe Mazzini's letters about the world wars. They wrote that it would take three world wars to destroy the world's love for nationalism and to ensure the people would demand a one world government. The letter, written in 1871, was sent to various Brotherman lodges and explained how three world wars were to be created to bring in a one world government. One of the letters was displayed at the London Museum until 1977, where some claim it was moved to the British Library in London. The library claims the letter doesn't exist. If the letter doesn't exist, then somehow the wars played out exactly as this non-existent letter predicted. Prior to the First World War, there was no sense of urgency by the people who designed this plan for these three world wars. The letter said, the First World War must be brought about in order to permit the establishment to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by this agentur of the establishment between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. The Brothermen were involved in the assassination of the Archduke Francis Ferdinand that touched off a chain of reactions. The goal was to create enough chaos and remove Russian Tsar Nicholas Romanov. Z. Vladimir Lenin had created a workers' union called the Bolsheviks. After they executed Tsar Nicholas and his family, they began the Russian Communist Party. So the First World War played out exactly as Pike and Mazzini's letters said it would. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zs. This war must be brought about so that NZism is destroyed and that the political Zism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Check. Israel was created in 1948 with the help of the Rothschilds, England, and the Belfort Declaration. The NZs were used to exterminate the Hebrew Jays and replace them with Zs. The world now sympathized with the Jayish people, not aware that the Zs had infiltrated Jayism, and the Cabal was free to invade Palestine, claim it for Israel, and completely eliminate the last true Israelites. In 1961, an Orthodox Jay, Ben Hetch, wrote the book Perfidy, where he shows evidence that the Z and reformed Jays sacrificed the Orthodox Jays of Europe and that the emigration bureaucracy of the Third Reich was run by Zs. The emigration officials made sure the Rothschilds and reformed Jays got out of Europe, but the Orthodox Jays were abandoned. In 1985, Z David Wyman wrote The Abandonment of the Jays and admits that the American Zs concentrated on the creation of the nation of Israel rather than try to save the Orthodox Jays in Europe. He writes, The unavoidable conclusion is that during the H, the leaderships of American Zism concentrated its major force on the drive for a future Jayish state in Palestine. It consigned rescue of the Jays to a distinctly secondary position. Communism also became stronger because in 1949, China became a communist nation. 
they just celebrated their 70th anniversary. So far, the first two World Wars seem to have accomplished the goals set out by Pike and Mazzini. When the public is distracted by things like war, scientists are usually carrying out the most depraved experiments. Since the fall and taught the weapons and working of death, humanity has literally been caged, hunted, and experimented on like animals. Ancient writings of various cultures depict all sorts of forms of torture. Unfortunately, the scientists we often hail as heroes were nothing but devils themselves or mad scientists. This section may be a little bit graphic for those who do not want to hear about bizarre experiments or surgical procedures. In the 1940s and 50s, there were plenty of Soviet scientists who were experimenting with all types of things that modern scientism says were pioneers for things like organ transplants. The point was not strictly medical. The point was to figure out how the physiology works so they could manipulate it as they see fit. They perfected nerve gas, torture techniques, and biological weapons. They wanted to bring the dead back to life and capture consciousness. The ultimate goal was control over creation, both physical and mental. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov made hybrids of mouse rats, zebra donkeys, bison cows, and guinea pig rats. Hey, he even tried a few times to make a half-human, half-ape. There was Sergei Brukhanico, who invented a primitive heart-lung machine called the autojector. The most famous of his experiments were with severed heads of dogs, one of which was able to eat a piece of cheese for the onlooking audience. He did dog head transplants too, and brought executed dogs back to life. And Vladimir Demikov, the dude that sewed two dogs together. If anyone's curious, Soviet experiments on dogs were recorded in the documentary Experiments in the Revival of Organisms. These men play God. They decide whether an animal lives or dies. They decide whether humans live or die. They study whatever evil agenda they have in mind. During this time period, there was always an esoteric reason. Remember, these are also above ground scientists. Those in the so-called underworld, as the establishment calls it, are allegedly working with hybrids, which is nothing new. I mean, Nephilim were hybrids. They've always been obsessed with gene manipulation. We've been investigating a figure named Count St. Germain. Now he is a legendary vampire. According to legend, he used blood as a way to extend his life. Jennifer, have there ever been any real life cases of people consuming blood that would actually prolong their lives? Well, we've always been fascinated with blood. And back in the 1700s, there's a gentleman known as Paul Burt who actually invented something called parabiasis. He basically took two rats, a younger rat and an older rat. He sliced them and sewed them together. The blood from the younger rat actually ended up having benefits to the older. So the older had better cognitive function, was able to go through a maze faster. However, the younger mouse ended up slowing down and wasn't able to maneuver through a maze. And they were connected through the circulatory system. Correct. So basically when they were sewn together, the capillaries actually joined together. And so they essentially had one circulatory system. The, quote, father of biological warfare, Shiroishi, was chief of Japan's biological warfare program in the Japanese military between world wars, whose record includes deliberately infecting thousands of captives with deadly diseases and dissecting over 3,000 live prisoners without anesthesia. We wouldn't know how to properly warm someone up from hypothermia without the grotesque freezing experiments conducted by Sigmund Racher. He also killed plenty of victims with his portable pressure chamber to see how much weight a human body can withstand. In the name of science, of course. Racher also developed cyanide suicide pills. This brings me to the most notorious of all, the Angel of Death, also known as Josef Mengele, or the father of modern mind control. Joseph Mengele was a doctor of philosophy and medicine who performed horrifying experiments on humans and was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. The German SS officer and physician at the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camps during this had a bottomless pool of condemned human beings at his disposal. Do you see the problem? The mind control doctors saw their patients as subhuman, as cattle, guinea pigs. Now, participation by psychiatrists, scientists, and doctors were not just a few random guys interested in mind control. Instead, these experiments were organized and systematic and involved many psychiatrists and medical schools in good standing, like Yale, Harvard, UCLA, Stanford. The mind control experiments occurred with biological and chemical weapons, as well as radiation, all funded by these people. This did not happen the way that the establishment wants you to believe that it did. It's a massive topic worth exploring if you haven't already.
The significance of this cannot be underestimated. Some Christians perceive spiritual warfare as something happening on a personal level, just the spiritual personal level. The world is not generally perceived as a threat. The monarch victims of today are the product of centuries of efforts by the Kabbalists, the Brother Men's, and occult adepts to completely control human behavior. The reality is, the world and the most powerful people are out to destroy them. That there are real humans and real human institutions that desire to do physical harm to us humans as a whole. When the monarch programming started, the top men in the monarch programming project were in the establishment. Yosef Mengele was the lead programmer and had already achieved the rank of Grand Master within the establishment and was a skilled Kabbalistic magician. He disappeared from Auschwitz in January of 1945 when the establishment smuggled him to the U.S. so that his knowledge of programming, which was fine-tuned on thousands of concentration camp child victims, could be put to the use on a mass scale in the U.S. Programming was simplistic before the NZ Germans came over. The reason for all the strange and horrific experimentation was for mind control. Another successful enterprise started by the NZs was via Operation Paperclip and Operation Bloodstone to bring the NZ scientists to America to found scientific organizations such as NASA and the CIA. What about the coming Third World War? Well, what if I told you that the Third World War is over? According to Pike, the Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentur of the establishment between the political Zs and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on the issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheist, and we will provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the citizens, obliged to defend themselves against the world, minorities of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation, the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Their, quote, global war on terror plan has succeeded, and true Christianity has been replaced with mystic or brother-manic Christianity, and atheism replaced with pseudo-pagan or New Age allegiance. All glorifying Lucifer's gnosis. The Scottish Rite motto is Order Ab Chao, or Order Out of Chaos. The two beasts of Revelation represent the right and the left, the dark and the light, white and black, bad and evil. They're part of the same checkerboard floor. The left eye, the right eye, same face. One of the main goals of Brother Manry is to return to a golden age, a millennial hope that depends on some type of messiah or king to rule. They believe in rebuilding Solomon's temple. The exoteric belief is that a physical third temple will be built in Jerusalem. But the true esoteric meaning that they know is that the temple is in us, our souls. The people who have shaped our reality know that that is truly rebuilding the temple by rebuilding humanity into their creation. A lot of people think that the Catholic Church is the one running the world and making all the plans, but they don't know how the CIA, the Communists, Rothschilds, and the Brothers are the ones running the Catholic Church. When Pope John Paul I suddenly died of a heart attack 33 days after his election in 1978, many believed it was because the brothers were not able to control him, so they got rid of him on his 33rd day. Prince Bernard of the Netherlands and part of the black nobility had veto power over who became Pope after the Second World War. These things indicate that the Catholic Church is controlled by a more powerful force. Brothers infiltrated and took over the Catholic Church. A fraternal summit was held in 1967 on Washington's birthday where leaders of the Catholic Knights of Columbus and the leaders of the northern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite of Brother Manry discussed combining the two orders with the goal of capturing the Catholic Church. John Paul I was poisoned by Brother Men and John Paul II, a Polish J and a Brother Man, replaced him. Important members of the Bilderbergers now have veto power over who becomes the Pope. 
The Brothermen have infiltrated every position of power within the Vatican hierarchy, while the P2 Lodge continues financing corrupt causes. The Catholic Church has been the major power behind the ecumenical movement, which has purposefully taken Christian churches away from their doctrinal foundations. What's important about the Catholic Church is its power and size. After some stops and starts, the Catholic Church fell into line and is now aligned with the forces who controlled them. Recently, numerous priests have been discovered molesting children, and hundreds of lawsuits have been filed against them. But it is still not coming out that this abuse is connected to ritual trauma-based mind control. As a point of interest, each of these has ties back to this family. Now that we've laid the foundation, we can go a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at the daughter of Brother Manry, the New Age. Contrary to the popular use of the term, the origins of the New Age are as ancient as it gets. In 1957, the New Age leader, Brother Man, and Theosophical Society president, Alice Bailey, said, There is no dissociation between the one universal church, the sacred inner lodge of all true brothers, and the innermost circles of esoteric societies. She also wrote in her book, Externalization of the Hierarchy, that the three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church, the brother-man fraternity, and the educational field. The establishment has the power to control who the experts are. Pay attention to who is in these top positions. Who gets Rhodes Scholarships? academic positions, media coverage, or is seen as an expert in any field. Look who gets their books published, their songs played, their clothes worn. Their people are often placed in prominent positions when thousands of better candidates are overlooked. For example, here's a clip of non-establishment YouTuber Anthony of 10 Second Songs. establishments Lana Del Rey on Saturday Night Live. There is a power base the establishment creates by influencing who we think our experts are. The importance of distorting history at the very beginning is so everything from then on is built on a faulty foundation. The mind works to protect this framework at all costs, which is why so many suffer from cognitive dissonance and defend their tradition-oriented beliefs instead of actual truth. The reason this rewriting of history is important is to hide events and examples that would expose the occult rulers of not just the U.S., but across the world. Who writes the history books? Who pays to keep them written as they want? In 1946, the Rockefeller Foundation admitted in their annual report that they are subsidizing corporations of historians to prevent anyone from rewriting history. However, they haven't destroyed any evidence or documents. It's just been occulted from the public. The truth lies just beneath the surface, but they know that few will look, fewer will go through their gatekeepers, and even fewer will put all the pieces together. Like how Maria Montessori, the founder of the Montessori system, has ties to the Theosophical Society. This inconvenient truth of rewriting history can anger people because they've been led to believe in myths such as George Washington and the other founding fathers were great Christians. According to Deism.com, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin were deists who worshipped the light and rejected the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. Small groups who have been trained by leading brother men have been infiltrating Christian churches for decades now. The main purpose was to realign existing churches with New Age thinking. In the book, The Secret Teachings of the Brother Man Lodge by John Ankerberg and John Weldon, the Educational and Historical Commission of the Grand Lodge of Georgia said, quote, Let us take a look at the number of great Bible classes for men which have been organized by the church. Many of these classes are being led by enlightened brothers. These laymen are bringing to the interpretation of the Bible many of the brother man's great revelations. Elizabeth Clare Prophet makes it clear she believes she is following orders from the Great White Brotherhood, which is the same group that Helena Blavatsky, Alice Bailey, the Rosicrucians, and the Esoteric Brotherman follow. The Brother Manic book, Ancient Mystical Oriental Brother Manry, from 1907, says, quote, The ancient wisdom religion is the thread soul on which are strung all various incarnations and encasements of the religious life, begotten by that spiritual hierarchy, the Great White Brotherhood, in whose guardianship is the evolution of the human race. This may all seem random, but all of these characters eventually connect. Helena Blavatsky started the Theosophical Society, sometimes called Co-Brother Manry, with the help of a Rosicrucian group as the primary sponsors. 
It was her belief that Lucifer was the savior of mankind and that the God of the Bible was the adversary of man and felt that the name Satan described God better than Lucifer. Once the key to Genesis is in our hands, the scientific and symbolical Kabbalah unveils the secret. The great serpent of the Garden of Eden and the Lord God are identical. She is insinuating the secret of Kabbalah is that Lucifer is God. Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society see those believing in scriptures as fighting against divine truth. When repudiating and slandering the dragon of esoteric divine wisdom, this stuff has even made its way into children's shows. An episode of Arthur from 2017 shows the tree of life and tells the story of trying to make a golem, a mind-controlled slave. Lucifer's mischaracterization of God gave birth to all the mystery religions. The Theosophical Society speaks of the second coming of Christ as Christ consciousness, of man's divinity returning to the human race. Theosophist John H. Dewey wrote, it is not proposed, be it observed, to replace Christianity by Buddhism, nor Buddhism by Mohammedism, nor both by Jaism, nor yet all three by Spiritism, but to bring each of the old religions back to its esoteric origin, meaning, and purity, and if they are found to be, in essence, one. Shall we not have found the true religion of humanity? While the entire point is to kill God, the mystery religions, brother men, theosophy, Gnosticism, and the New Age movement teach that true mystic or cosmic Christianity is the Gnostic quest for enlightenment. Q is the newest incarnation of promoting the same false teaching. Thus continuing the idea that man can be God by seeking out the fruit of the tree of good and evil. This was the whole point of Pike and Mazzini's Three World Wars for God to be replaced with the God of Gnosis. Many have fallen for the evangelical twist to Q's posts and Trump's outward appearance, but it is nothing but mystic false teachings meant to bend the public into worship of the state. George Hegel, the German philosopher who popularized dialectics said, the universal is to be found in the state. The state is the divine idea as it exists on earth. We must therefore worship the state as the manifestation of the divine on earth. And consider that, if it is difficult to comprehend nature, it is harder to grasp the essence of the state. The state is the march of God through the world. Just because something sounds good does not mean that it is not a wolf in sheep's clothing. Most hear the term New Age and think of crystals or tarot cards or yoga, but that's its utmost exoteric form that infiltrated popular culture. I hope you've started to see it's much more complex than that. The popular New Age movement in the search for enlightenment is often tied in with natural drugs as well, like mushrooms. Psychonauts are still looking for enlightenment via eating of a form of physical representation of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, hallucinogenic plants and substances. However, there can be an aggressive lack of curiosity about the origins of trends among Christians. I drive by a lot of churches promoting their yoga classes. And I want you to think about this when it is not corrupted by the occult, but rather incorporated by the occult, you know which side it stands on. The very core is, at its roots, yoga originated from the ancient worship of Hindu gods against the first commandment. False prophets dressed up like lambs but preaching Lucifer's version of liberation will never lead to truth or awakening or moksha. It'll lead to possession, infestation, and oppression by demonic or negative entities. Remember how any pagan or occult practices act as consent, no matter how exoteric it looks. I felt like I was gonna like pass out just because like I was getting so lightheaded. Then finally when she told us to stop and like touch our faces, I felt like my face was like numb, like I could, my hands, I knew my hands were touching my face, but it didn't feel like I was touching my face. I guess it would be comparable to like if you've ever tried like Vicodin or something like that, you just felt completely high and numb. <laughs> it all goes back to the hidden secret knowledge of the serpent. God's knowledge is free. Freedom comes from truth but despotism thrives on ignorance. Astrology is another example of a trend that is purely esoteric at its core. The fallen angel Barakael was the one who taught astrology to men. Some like to claim superiority over Christians by saying astrology predates it. And while it does predate the organized religion called Christianity, it does not predate Christ and the Creator. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Christ and God did not begin with organized Christianity. The creator predates creation. One last word of caution regarding the popular New Age practice, meditation. When done as a group, this can be extremely dangerous. Meditation puts you into an alpha state or a flat state. 
If you spend an hour to an hour and a half a day in meditation, after a few weeks, there is a great probability that you will not return to full beta consciousness. The more you meditate, the flatter your mind becomes until thought ceases. According to the Psychonaut Field Manual, this biologically flat state is referred to as Gnosis. Brother men in their use of the New Age had no plans to violently destroy the church, but to silently overthrow it. New Age writer William Thompson states, this new spirituality does not reject the earlier patterns of the great universal religions. Priest and church will not disappear. They will not be forced out of existence in the new age. They will be absorbed into the existence of the new age. Christianity has systematically been assassinated and replaced by the brother man's religion. True Christians are still being persecuted by these brothers. Why do I have to monitor what I'm saying? Why will I be taken down, my voice silenced, and my free will to express my beliefs taken away? I mean, people who expose these organizations don't generally have great track records, which is why I really appreciate you guys keeping me in your prayers. That means a lot. The truth is being persecuted not nominal Christians, who sit in a building and listen to trained pastors who were taught at their brother man run seminaries. The truth gets shut down at every turn, but lies looking like truth get promoted and followed. Why are we, the truth speakers, the minority? Because we are like a drop in a wave. Because we metaphorically have to walk miles and miles just to find another true believer. We stand for truth and lies hate nothing more than being exposed. This is the reason that the McChurches will never be shut down. They're not a threat. Most of brother men run organizations and Satan will not divide his own kingdom. He may use it to reach a synthesis, but he will never destroy it. In monarch programming, there are two kingdoms. The kingdom of Satan, which is powerful and meant to be feared, that represents the world. And the kingdom of light, not shown to be good, powerful, or intelligent, but acts as a place to go to escape the fear and trauma of Satan's kingdom. These two kingdoms in programming act as the brothers want the church to be, a safe place for the mind to recuperate from an overwhelmingly terrifying world. But it's not intended to be a threat or have any power over Satan's kingdom. A lot of Christians treat church the same way. What can God do for me, not what can I do for God? A place to socialize, to see and be seen, to, to go for the sake of feeling cleansed, okay? Point is, most of these types of Christians are still very active in Lucifer's kingdom and believe because they accepted Jesus, they have free reign to act as everyone else, but not be judged for it. God sees this hypocrisy and divides those who truly know him from those who just know of him. Everyone knows the parable of the wheat and the tares. Choose the wheat and leave the tares. But agriculturally, it's actually a fascinating metaphor. Wheat is a grain or a cereal type plant that is processed for food. A tare is a type of weed that resembles wheat during the early stages of growth. A tare is a weed also known as false wheat. So the biblical metaphor used just in the agricultural meaning Wheat and tares represent not just believers versus non-believers, it's actually the difference in true believers and those that appear to be. So to conclude this section, the New Age religion can be condensed into seven identifying beliefs according to Fritz Springmeier. One, God is impersonal. Two, Christ is not almighty God, but a good teacher. Three, Jesus is but one of many Christs. Four, sin and evil do not exist. Five, Man should seek instruction from the spiritual world. Six, all religious teachings are of merit, except those that are Christian and believe in absolute truth. Therefore, the religious views of Egypt, Babylon, India, and the Aztecs are held to be of value for us today. And seven, man can be a god. Speaking of wheat and false wheat, or tares, we cannot discuss Godrail's viral infection of our world without talking about one of his favorite hangouts, church. There are three major fronts used by the elite for programming monarch slaves and the general population, which are religious fronts, the national security agencies, and the military, as well as the entertainment business, including Hollywood and the music industry as a fourth. The religious fronts have been used for centuries by groups like the Jesuits and the Assassins, and more recently, the Church of Scientology, the Church Universal and Triumphant, the Church of Satan, the Charismatic Movement, and megachurches. Mega churches are full of new age and frankly unbiblical teachings, like casting visions and prosperity preaching. 
independent or non-brother preachers want to uplift people. They want to share the word in a hopeful and loving way. That's not the brother's intent at all. Religious fronts are important to the establishment because they give them an outlet to balance their good and bad deeds as their Gnostic philosophy requires. Unless someone does good charitable deeds, they can't be high up in the Luciferian hierarchy. Just because someone donates to charity or does something respectable doesn't mean that they aren't a high up Luciferian. It's actually a requirement. Those of you who know about programming understand the complex amnesia walls involved in the structure of altars. If the programmers want, they can shatter a front Christian altar level and create a new level of New Age believing altars to replace the Christian one. We have just witnessed an example of this when John Cooper of Skillet posted an article about the massive falling away of how many church leaders are abandoning the faith in favor of the New Age. Even though our world and those who run it promote white witchcraft in the form of the feel-good New Age, the Bible is clear that all witchcraft is wrong. There shall not be found among you anyone who practices witchcraft. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. How can we expect churches to be warning about the New Age when they don't even warn about the pagan origins of Christmas or Easter? Or they don't talk about the times we're in? That may have been acceptable 30, 20, or 10 years ago, but in this age of information, remaining ignorant is untenable. The establishment doesn't just program individuals, they program entire nations. The most influential people in the establishment are the very ones who groomed the world to believe that Billy Graham was a man of God. The image the establishment created of Billy Graham is not real. The same establishment that created Billy Graham is the one who put In God We Trust on the Federal Reserve's money. God is capitalized because it's an acronym. Guns, oil, drugs. But it's more than that. It's the God of this world. After decades of cooperation between almost all Christian churches worldwide through organizations like the National Council of Churches, the Billy Graham Crusades, and the Promise Keepers, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and non-denominational churches can all be thought of as one huge organization. The infiltration and control of the Christian religion was one of the easiest tasks for the establishment since they are considered soft targets by the intelligence agencies. Non-believers look to the hypocrisy of churches and these false teachers and conclude that God must be evil and bad, or even just a fictitious idea. But they never stop and think about Lucifer's role, his free will, and the army of people he has doing his work. Throwing the true scriptures out because of the false scriptures of Christian Zism is an erroneous logical fallacy that happens all too often. An honest researcher will look into these fallacies and get down to the bottom of it realizing the brilliance and awe of the one true God, and the unimaginable lengths that Lucifer will go to to convince the world otherwise. Look, I get it. It's not cool to follow God. I know the way the world wants us to feel about him, but being treated badly by hypocrites and people who claim to know him is no excuse for not getting to know him yourself. That's like saying you'll never eat vegetables because you hate vegans. God isn't the God the church created. He isn't full of hate and legalism. God is truth, and the truth is love. It is through his truth that we're set free. If Lucifer can't destroy the truth and erase God, he can make us forget the true teachings by replacing them with charismatic leaders who teach their own doctrines, like Billy Graham. Although many may have been aided in their relationship with Christ through the exoteric facade of people like Graham, the reality of these leaders is very dark. Billy Graham became a nationally known figure in 1949 thanks to multi-millionaire William Randolph Hearst's influence and financial backing. All the presidents and many leading politicians worldwide have been close friends with Graham. Strategic control and execution of the dark or light world order succeed by placing key 33rd degree brothers at the top of political, religious, and economic institutions. Billy Graham's first crusades were funded by people in the establishment. The Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers, the Whitney's, and Chase Manhattan Bank. William Randolph Hearst's media empire was responsible for publishing glowing reviews of his crusades. Just because Billy Graham does good things or preaches the gospel does not mean he is not part of the network or the establishment. Remember, Gnostic philosophy requires them to do good deeds to offset their bad ones. Some of the greatest philanthropists are also some of the highest ranking Satanists. Billy Graham publicly supported the ecumenical mission of the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches. Their mission is to combine all churches into one, unity. 
Billy Graham did more than anyone to bring about the One World Church. Christians have been conditioned to believe that Billy Graham is a great prophet of God by the establishment media, which, in reality, he was a 33rd degree brother man who had many angelic attachments and was given an honorary knighthood by the order of the British Empire. He was allowed to be with every president from Truman to Trump and was called America's pastor. I mean, do you really think that the establishment would allow presidents and powerful people like Billy Graham? If there was any danger, he would actually bring someone to Christ? No. They'd get rid of him one way or another. They wouldn't be praising him. The same way that the Pope is venerated and loved by the world, whereas the truth and the real Jesus Christ and his teachings are trampled on and despised. Graham's crusades were like concerts. Most of the people there were his fans. People who've never heard of a band's music usually don't show up. Most of the attendees were already Christians, and most decisions were for trivial things like quitting smoking. After a crusade in Scotland, for example, churches there noticed a decline in membership, not the promised increase by the crusade staff. But when the media reported on the crusades, they made it seem as though thousands of people became new Christians. On May 28th of 1978, in the Japanese newspaper Mainichi Daily News, Graham said, I think communism's appeal to youth is its structure and promise of a future utopia. Mao Zedong's eight precepts are basically the same as Ten Commandments. In fact, if we can't have the Ten Commandments read in the schools, I'll settle for Mao's precepts. Jesus said, Woe to you when all men speak well of you for so did the fathers to the false prophets. In terms of a paper trail, we have the following. Billy Graham's books consistently refer to basically only brothers. Billy Graham endorsed the Brother Manic Demolay program of Youth as God's Work. This endorsement by Billy Graham is in a Brother Man book that is used to educate people about the craft. That book is The Clergy and the Craft, and it says that the people who are quoted in it are brothers. His closest associates were brother men, like David M. McConnell, who was the director of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and a U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. The Southern Baptists, of which Billy Graham was a member, are controlled by the Brothermen. During the 1920s, the Southern Baptists joined the Brothers by the millions. The establishment made it a top priority in the 1940s and 50s to infiltrate churches. After an initial 20-year period of intense infiltration, they could count on their members to generationally continue their presence and influence. None of the Southern Baptist Convention's presidents have opposed Brother Manry. Billy Graham gave away his association with Brother Men with his prominent false teaching in Brother Manry of inclusivism, the belief that followers of non-Christian religions will also be saved. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? Well, Christianity and being a true believer, you know, I think there's the, the, the body of Christ, which comes from all the Christian groups around the world or outside the Christian groups. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And I don't think that we're going to see a great sweeping uh, revival that will turn the whole world to Christ at any time. I think James answered that, the Apostle James, in the first council in Jerusalem when he said that God's purpose for this age is to call out a people for his name. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light, light, light that they have and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. This is false. In Luke 13:24, Yahusha, Christ, says, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. And again in Matthew 7, 13, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So, one of the biggest uh, evangelists, you know, Bible uh, preaching uh, religious figures, Protestant figures, 
is a Freemason. Billy Graham was the only pastor to lie in honor in the rotunda of the Capitol building. Such a high, worldly honor for a true man of God. Or was it honoring a brother man that had completed his mission? There's a lot more to Billy Graham than meets the eye. I've left a link to an article about Billy Graham and his ties to SRA with links for you to research in the description if you're interested. The establishment created Billy Graham and he started the Evangelical Revival, or another Great Awakening, around the world. But instead of making strong Christians, he watered down the faith, merged it with all other religions, and taught unbiblical doctrine. Billy Graham was the product of a decades-long infiltration of churches that started primarily with John D. Rockefeller Sr., who was instrumental in funding seminaries, churches, and colleges. He claimed to be a member of the Baptist Church, but his gravestone gives away what church he really belonged to. Speaking of Southern Baptists, a friend of mine took this photo in South Central LA where you can see the combination of brothers with the Baptist Church. The establishment also created megachurches. What the brothers did was create mick religions. These massive fast food chain-like institutions are void of any real substance. Megachurches differ from the 60s and 70s churches in their appeal to a younger audience. Similar to their older counterparts, just updated, they employ tactics commonly found in behavior modification. Jonathan Edwards was a preacher and philosopher who began the First Great Awakening and spiritual revival in the American colonies in the mid-1700s. The Second Great Awakening happened during the 1800s. Edwards was one of the first to use persuasion or brainwashing techniques on his congregations. The preacher's monotone voice filled the church of Northampton, Massachusetts. As the brilliant Jonathan Edwards spoke, he kept his eyes focused on the back wall of the church. Gently, Edwards's words began to sink into the hearts of the assembly, and although his method of speaking lacked enthusiasm, his words were powerful. Revival followed. During the 1730s, the Church of Northampton felt the stirring of the Holy Spirit, moving them from their lukewarm apathy to an awakening of their souls, delivering his most famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, on July 8th of 1741, in Enfield, Connecticut, Edwards helped spread the revival. A great commotion swept over the people and they began wailing and crying and screeching loudly. Edwards started brainwashing people. The methods are so ingrained today that most pastors, news anchors, or other people don't even realize the techniques they're using have to do with behavior modification. The first step in religious or political brainwashing is to work on the emotions of an individual or a group until they reach an abnormal level of anger, fear, excitement, or nervous tension. This lets suggestions easily sway people since their judgment is impaired. A common formula in megachurches before the service even starts, the second you walk in, there will be repetitive music playing. A repetitive beat ranging from 45 to 72 beats per minute, which is close to the beat of the human heart, is considered hypnotic and creates an altered state of consciousness called the alpha state. This state makes you at least 25 times more susceptible to suggestion than when in full beta consciousness. This response becomes conditioned and is easier to slip into with repetitive exposure, like going to church every Sunday. Next, the guest speaker or pastor or whomever will come out and prepare the audience for the service. Like a hype man before a talk show, previews before a movie. And then a band will begin to play to unite the room. In older revivalist type churches, fear bonding was common. Talking about fire and brimstone. But the mega churches of today are more of an anonymous group therapy session. They do not equip believers with the factual information to defend their faith or dispel all the misinformation about God. From my perspective, these megachurches have made faithists. People who act like the world, do the same things as those in the world do, yet believe they are saved simply by saying they believe in Jesus, the way that an atheist believes in scientism or the state which created it. When they don't independently test their ideas, or test their pastors, they tend to believe it at face value, worshiping the idea of God, but not God directly, reading countless books written by brothers about God, but not spending that time in the actual word. After all, that human can't save you. That church building can't save you. Your relationship with the creator belongs to you and him alone. Christians know enough to be saved, but they don't know enough to be dangerous to Lucifer's kingdom. A technique often used by pastors, politicians, and lawyers is called the voice roll, which is a way of talking to a specific rhythm, creating a hypnotic effect, focusing on speaking during the exhale. Here's an example. What you call 
a problem. Heaven calls a harvest. We keep waiting for everything to be right in our life, to feel blessed, to have joy, to give back. I'm uh, sure you all can think of a couple of examples. One of those may have been a president, uh, but let me be clear, this technique is very effective. Movie theaters and concerts work the same way. Some of the popular pastors are very skilled at these techniques. According to CheatSheet.com, this is the net worth of the 10 richest pastors. Joyce, you are a little God's Meyer is worth 8 million. TD Prosperity Gospel and Positive Thinker Jakes is worth 18 million. Franklin Voodoo Donuts Graham is 25 million. Rick the Purpose Driven Warren at 25 million. Billy Brother Man Graham, 25 million. Creflo That's My Real Last Name Dollar at 27 million. Joel Threefold Flame Osteen at 40 million. Benny Falls Healer Hin at 60 million. And Pat Lyons Paul Robertson at 100 million. And the Master of Prosperity Gospel Preaching Kenneth Copeland is worth a ridiculous three hundred million dollars. Yasha or Jesus had some strong words for preachers like these. The Pharisees who were lovers of money heard all these things and they ridiculed him and he said to them, you are those who justify yourself before men but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Be careful who teaches you. One of the best kept secrets of the intelligent agencies is their infiltration of religious organizations. You know, if you take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim, to us, Abba Father, God. I realized you had built a world as a leader that you liked to live in. And his father, Frank Houston. He too was a high profile church leader, but used his position and influence to abuse children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Alexandra. But what about fellowship? What about us just regular churchgoers? The most important fellowship to be in is with our creator, is with God. Second is with other born again believers. And if you're a social person, then maybe church can be helpful, but there are plenty of other ways to meet up with other believers. I mean, Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Small groups are great since everyone knows who's leading them. I don't have enough time here to do an expose, but look at this. I went to get this picture and on BibleGateway.com, they say, don't miss our free C.S. Lewis daily email. C.S. Lewis was a practicing witch and his works are full of the mystic symbolism I've been talking about. This is exactly what I mean by places appearing to be Christian actually pushing the mysteries. You feel like because Bible Gateway supports C.S. Lewis, he must be safe. He is not. According to his own autobiography, Surprised by Joy, Lewis says he abandoned his Anglican faith at age 13 due to the influence of a school mistress who was involved with theosophy, Rosicrucianism, and spiritualism. He developed what he called a lust for the occult, saying, it is a spiritual lust. Like the lust of the body, it has the fatal power of making everything else in the world seem uninteresting while it lasts. He also said that he was strongly influenced by George MacDonald, who was a universalist. McDonald's book, Lilith, is based on the Talmudic teaching that Adam was married to a demon named Lilith before he married Eve. By the end of McDonald's book, Lilith is redeemed, and Adam says that even the devil will eventually be redeemed. Back to megachurches. They are part of a centuries-long plan to stamp out true Christianity, and the people who don't follow this New Age pseudo-Christian mysticism. The occult groups that make up the establishment were the ones responsible for popularizing and infecting churches with false doctrines. Like Christian Zism and the idea of a third temple. The landmass known as Israel is a Z state created at the expense of the Hebrew Jays. After this, and has no relation to the Israel of the Bible. One of the lies that has crept in is believing that a third temple will be built in Jerusalem, reintroducing sacrifices and bring in the Jewish Messiah, who Christians wrongfully think is a human called the Antichrist. Some Christians think they don't have to worry about it because they're going to be secretly raptured. The idea of blood sacrifices being restored at a temple is a slap in the face to Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Christians who believe this are called Christian Zs because they have been deceived by their pastors who were taught under the Z-funded Brother Men Run seminaries. This idea is part of a relatively new philosophy that has infiltrated Christian churches called dispensationalism. These pseudo-scriptural ideas the brothers are introducing into the churches include unquestioned Christian support for the state of Israel. The primary denomination pushing these doctrines are the Southern Baptists. 
but many have adopted these ideas by now, regardless of denomination. As I said, during the 1920s, the Southern Baptists joined the brothers by the millions. As an example of Baptist doctrines, the Encyclopedia of Southern Baptists, Volume 4, states, The Millennial Kingdom will be predominantly Jewish with headquarters in Palestine and temple worship in Jerusalem. Brothers have succeeded in infiltrating the churches and changing Yahusha, Jesus' teachings. These Talmudic beliefs crept into Christianity primarily through the work of theosophist John Nelson Darby and the Z controlled Cyrus Schofield and his commentary in the Schofield Bible. John Nelson Darby was a preacher in the late 1800s who used brother manic and theosophic language in his writings. Just one example on one page of his book, Christ, the Faithful Witness, he uses a strictly brother man phrase and calls God the architect. Darby was told about a Scottish lady, Margaret MacDonald, who had visions of the rapture and the Christians would be gathered secretly before Jesus' second coming. Another influence on Darby were the Irvingites, who helped Darby adopt the rapture theory. The first source, Margaret MacDonald, was a channeler or a spirit medium. And the second source, the Irvingites, received their teachings from Rabbi Ben Ezra, which was the pen name of a Spanish Jesuit, Emmanuel Lacunta. Then there's Charles Spurgeon, a famous English Baptist preacher in the 1800s, also known as the Prince of Preachers. He worked hard to get people used to hearing brother man language that is not found anywhere in scripture. There will be nothing there that is trumpery or temporary. Everything there is the best of the best, most suitable for the inhabitants and most glorious to behold. The very streets are paved with gold, exceeding rich and rare. The best builders of earth cannot be compared to the great builder above, the eternal architect, the everlasting brother man who has built those many mansions where his saints shall dwell forever. Another late 1800s preacher was Cyrus Schofield, a washed up Kansas lawyer who had served at the U.S. District Attorney for Kansas but was forced to resign due to scandal and questionable practices. Z. Samuel Untermeyer found him through a network of contacts in the Jayish Theological Seminary. Untermeyer was given the job of injecting Jayish Z beliefs into Christianity, thus creating Christian Zism, or the people who, quote, stand with Israel. Samuel Untermeyer introduced Schofield to Z and socialist world leaders. Even with Schofield's shady past, a criminal record, and the fact that he had never been to seminary, the Zs were able to control the press, do some public relations work, and along with their international network, he became one of America's leading theologians. Schofield introduced the idea of dispensationalism, which includes the rapture and a rebuilding of the Third Temple, through his commentary in his Reference Bible, which was printed by Oxford University Press in London, which is owned by Brotherman. The origins of dispensationalism can be traced back to a channeler, a Jesuit priest, a theosophist, a washed-up lawyer, and a Z organization bound and determined to inject Talmudic beliefs into Christianity. Since the false teaching of dispensationalism began, religious leaders like Oral Roberts, Hall Lindsey, and 33rd Brother Man and Southern Baptist Billy Graham, and David Jeremiah, have promoted the secret pre-trib rapture and the physical third temple ideas. Dispensationalism also teaches that history is divided into seven periods or dispensations. I'm sure the similarity of the coloring and the seven dispensations and the seven chakras is completely coincidental, but I digress. According to the Baptist press, in America, the Moody Bible Institute, the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, now Biola University, and Dallas Theological Seminary played important roles in spreading dispensationalism. Gradually, other schools and even entire denominations embraced the system. Adrian Rogers, Charles Stanley, and W.A. Criswell were among the most prominent Southern Baptist dispensationalists. Although dispensationalism likely is the most popular eschatological position among Southern Baptists today, Garrett noted that it was a new development in the 19th century with no antecedent in the Baptist past. You had Graves, who had the Fort Worth pastor J. Frank Norris, and then you had W.A. Criswell espousing dispensationalism, he said. But nobody back behind that period was at all inclined. And I would argue the reason is because it didn't come before the 19th century in Britain. After Christ ran the people who were selling ox, sheep, and doves out of a temple with a whip and overturned the money tables, the Jays said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jays then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? This dude is crazy. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. 
and in Acts 17.24, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gave to all mankind life and breath and everything. Yah does not live in a temple. All sacrifices were stopped when Jesus died and rose again. He is the ultimate redemption for sin, and he is our way to salvation. The only way to salvation. This third temple idea is blasphemy, and is based on a misinterpretation of the 70 weeks of Daniel. This is the dispensationalist theory. Then he, the Antichrist, a human Antichrist, mind you, shall confirm a covenant or a peace treaty with many, Israel, for one week, seven years. But in the middle of the week, after three and a half years, then he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, the tribulation temple sacrifices and offerings. Yahusha, Jesus, is the one who was cut down after three and a half years and ended sacrifice. This theology is a gross misinterpretation of Daniel and teaches that Jesus is the Antichrist. There is only one religion that believes that, the mysteries. Brother men are the ones who have looked forward to the Jayish goal of rebuilding the Jayish temple. However, they know the temple is in us, our hearts, which they call Solomon's temple. Animal sacrifices are nothing compared to what the Luciferian cults do on Friday and Saturday nights across the United States and across the world in covens. They also meet on the many satanic holiday days. Over 300,000 covens exist in the United States alone, each having 13 or more members. A black prince, or a black satanic magician, once estimated that 40 to 60,000 satanic human sacrifices occur just in the US yearly. Then there's the issue of monarch slaves. Worldwide, there are people whose free will has been taken away by Luciferian programmers. Those of you who've watched Lucifer's Playgrounds know exactly what I'm talking about. But one satanic ritual abuse survivor, Katie Groves, was born in Central Texas into a child snuff ring run by the CIA called Uncle Sam's Snuff Factory, or Genocide Factory, due to its participation in the systematic extermination of children of color. My name is Katie Groves, and I am a survivor of the child snuff industry. This video is about my experience growing up in a child snuff ring known as Uncle Sam's Snuff Factory. This ring was located in Central Texas. The Snuff Factory, also known as the Genocide Factory, is the very literal definition of hell on earth. Indeed, America is not the wonderful, free place we were taught it was as kids. These examples hardly stand alone. There are countless underworld activities going on in every corner of the earth. If that is not an abomination, I really don't know what is. Churches should be the first to expose the reality of ritual and satanic ritual abuse and help victims, yet they remain silent. Or worse, they are some of the biggest perpetrators of human and drug trafficking. Speaking of sacrifices and the god of sacrifice, Moloch, Acts 7, 38 through 43 documents the Israelites' apostasy in the desert and Yah calls them out. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. The star of Remphan is an occult star, not a reference to King David. David never had a star. It is, however, a symbol used by King Solomon. In verse 42, it says, Yah gave them up to worship the host of heaven, the fallen angels. Not long after we witnessed King Solomon's apostasy, Yah, or God, warned him not to marry foreign wives, but Solomon did anyway, and started worshipping their gods like Ashtaroth and Milcom, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Solomon built altars to Hamash, Moloch, and did as his wives did, burn incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Solomon is revered by the brethren and venerated by all modern occultists. Even the priests, the heads of the house of Jacob, are called out for their apostate practices. Who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off of them. And they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and his flesh within the cauldron. Let's stop here and address something that I've seen a lot. People wonder how Jesus could have been born through the line of Solomon. Please pause the video to read the slides. Scripture gives us Jesus' genealogy in Matthew, which is on the left, and Luke on the right. Matthew starts with Abraham and works down to Joseph. Luke starts with Joseph and works his way down to Adam. Both genealogies agree until we get to King David. Matthew says David begot Solomon, but Luke says David begot Nathan. After that point, the genealogies are completely different, meaning 
They can't both be for Joseph. So what's going on here? Matthew and Luke are describing two different lineages. Matthew follows the line of Joseph, and Luke seems to follow the line of Mary, who is the only blood relation to Jesus. Luke in verse 23 says, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed, meaning according to custom, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. But Matthew says Joseph was the son of Jacob. Here we have two lines from King David, the line of Solomon and the line of Nathan, which can only mean the Gospels are describing two different lineages. Luke most likely provided the biological genealogy of Mary. It's my belief that Jesus is from the line of Nathan and not Solomon, the apostate king. Worshiping the fallen angels has never stopped. The religion that began in the Garden of Eden with a lie has continued to this day and is the power behind the establishment that controls everything. The infamous temple on Epstein Island is physical proof that this type of worship and sacrifice is still going on with the elite. They don't need a third temple in Jerusalem to make their human sacrifices. Solomon's temple that the brothers are building ends up to be nothing other than Lucifer, the light bearer's temple. He is standing in the holy place where he does not belong. The place where the Holy Spirit should dwell in your heart is replaced with a search for Gnosis. There will never be a physical temple built on the site where the Muslim Dome of the Rock is, in my opinion. The third temple is us. It's our hearts, our souls. We are what Lucifer wants to take away from our creator. Sometimes dispensationalism makes Christians want to pull out of the world and just wait for the rapture. Instead of marching out to the front lines, it causes people to sit back and passively wait, never throwing a punch. The battle is now. We are in a war, the soul world war. I wanna challenge everyone to notice how often they use the future tense. This will happen, is going to, the coming this or that, someday there will be, once this or that happens, then they, then we, sometime, in the future. Instead, pay attention to what's already happened and what is happening at the moment before passing off an idea to some far off day after tomorrow. The same can be said about those waiting for robots or AIs or an alien invasion to come take over the world. Or even some fantastical technology that'll change our DNA. What magic really is, is mental manipulation, either of your own or manipulating someone else. The cabal wants you to believe in some AI or alien takeover, but the reality is we live in an artificial matrix that is transmitted into the lower atmosphere by the royal and noble bloodlines, priests, rabbis, imams, and different occultists, including but not limited to brother men and Jesuits, who are mathematical and geometric programmers of society. This is the esoteric reason for HARP. It uses wireless frequencies for its main purpose of behavior modification, mind control, and mental harassment. It's also done on a smaller scale to targeted individuals via smartphones or smart devices and even transformers. Radiation changes DNA. This grid radiates sigils or geometric designs into the atmosphere that resonate like when a rock is thrown into a river and the water ripples around it. Yes, these are also used to enhance the resonance or shift of frequency. Intelligence agencies track what people read online, and if they don't want a person to believe something that exposes them, they radiate vibrations of confusion or deception. Notice the pattern around everybody suddenly being against FE, except those that the spells don't work on. Everyone else feels irritated when the topic is brought up, so it's generally avoided. The internet is a dangerous place where sites are set up as decoys to take the pulse of people and then use the info against them like Godlike Productions and Facebook, are examples of weaponized sites. This is the reason there is so much confusion in the so-called truther community. Most of it is run by the very darkest occultists with the agenda of destroying any hope for finding truth. I see it as another reason to stick with the word of God and stay away from anything of the world. I realize me, a stranger on YouTube, is telling you that, but I'm trying to share what I've learned on my journey but you won't hurt my feelings at all if you prefer reading the Bible to watching my videos. Electronics have changed our reality. One reason may be due to the Human Brain Initiative funded by the EU. Jesuit James Bauer created a program called Genesis, which is a bio and neuro simulator created to hack the human brain and body. These frequencies are emitted from newer electronics, 
The Black nobility, the Kabbalah Center, the Italian Mafia, and the Church of Scientology also have neurobrain computers and many Hollywood victims are involved. In fact, this technology is in sites all over the world. The occultists deflect from their endeavors by promoting propaganda about some future AI and alien invasion. Electronic harassment, mental and physiological modification is here right now. The mind is the most powerful and sophisticated computer. In fact, scientists are now able to manipulate DNA to create computers. DNA is a material that will change when given a signal, a lot like the language of zeros and ones of computers. But it will not overheat like computers do, which slows down their computing power. Scientists discovered this information during research into holograms about 30 years ago. If the world knew everything that the occultists actually had technologically, which is at least 50 years more advanced than what they're telling us they have, we would go into something called future shock because we can't possibly imagine what's actually being used and just that exists based on what we have now. It would be like taking somebody from the 1920s and like, hey guys, here's an iPhone. The people in power create incremental changes over time so that they go unnoticed by most. All of you here now are helping to use their evil technology against them. I use my iPhone and the internet to try and get the truth out to as many people as possible because I can't talk to that many people in real life. And you guys who mirror my videos and share my videos and stuff, you're making me into a virus, which is awesome because we're infecting Lucifer's kingdom. It's great. So. Everybody out there, keep making your memes, keep making your shirts, everybody keep making FE proofs and do everything that you can. Let's just be viruses. It may sound crazy to think the thoughts and intent or the will of these few occult families and groups are transmitted or resonating through our atmosphere. Or is it? Principalities are the entities that act like waves over groups of people or places. There's obviously help from the demonic realm in accomplishing these goals. But don't be afraid, guys. Romans 38 says neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Regardless of what you believe about the prophetic biblical timeline, no one can justify sticking their head in the sand and waiting for tomorrow. Everyone should take the John 7:17 7, challenge. Find out whether what we believe is from God or from men. The brothers fly the flag of another country to cause a war and go unnoticed by blaming it on someone else. They false flagged the churches and exchanged the truth with lies. They turned salvation into a show. Walk down an aisle, say a prayer, sing a song, shake a brother man preacher's hand, follow the cool people on Instagram. The brothers joined churches, sat on the boards, monopolized the seminaries, and caused the entire true religion of Christianity to be replaced with an imposter, mystic Christianity, or Christian Zism. The brothers made the people believe we were a Christian nation, which is false. There are true Christians in this nation, but that doesn't mean we're a Christian nation. They brought us pagan festivals and never celebrate the feast days. Our museums are covered in brother man art. Our entertainment industry is dominated by their symbols. Our entire history is the history of their conquests. Their architecture is everywhere. Lucifer is the god of this world, the architect, and nothing in architecture is ever superfluous. Their religion is shoved down our throats everywhere we turn. We are the drop and they are the wave. This secret knowledge isn't secret, it's everywhere you turn. It's just a matter of having eyes to see and ears to hear or not. Hey honey, do you need anything from the alchemical symbol for gold store? I'm just gonna get in my Ahura Mazda, or my Subaru, which is the Japanese word for Pleiades, or maybe my baby eater Alfa Romeo or Saturn symbol car and drive by the many brother-owned shops on my way and pick up some GMO quote-unquote food with the quote-unquote money we barely have from my two jobs I work non-stop so we can download free podcasts about serial killers they're still trying to figure out why they snapped, which has nothing to do with MK Ultra, and maybe watch a CIA piece of propaganda in a movie theater once in a blue moon when we feel spontaneous. Oh, and we won't mention the Gwen Towers always conspicuously placed nearby. Then I'll go home and do yoga, or maybe trance out in this piece of black obsidian, which will show me anything I want in the world just by asking it. And because I'm out of time to catch up on current affairs, since I barely have time to read an entire recipe online, I'm gonna have my TV gurus tell me what to think so I don't look like the odd man out at work tomorrow at my job and computer science and systems analysis 
where the language and terminology used in computer science and especially software is all based on Greek demonology, a perfect example of how mystical and occult our apparently secular society is. Anyway, people are believing false doctrine because they are believing in false authority. Mystic Christianity is a negation of Christ's teachings. Yausha, Jesus Christ, was in blatant disregard for the religious hierarchies of the day and set out to free the Israelites and the world from false leaders. He taught people they have direct access to God without a hierarchy. The New Age is the opposite of those teachings. They promise freedom but promote things that enslave us. And it's still the Great White Brotherhood hierarchy and in our own positive thinking or magical willpower to believe in. They give us gurus to do thinking for us. Christ showed the people that they have permission to have access to God, but in India, Babylon, Greece, and Egypt, the religious leaders were requiring initiations into their mystery religions. These leaders acted as guardians of this mystery knowledge. Allegiance to the power structure allowed you access to secret knowledge. These ingredients are the same things that make up the brother man structure and the mick churches. Bottom line is the systematic infiltration of Christian churches by the brother men created a radical departure from the original Christians and replaced them with their own imposters. Brother men are told to carry the temple of Solomon in their hearts. The new age, Brother Manry's daughter religion, uses very similar terminology. I did a video on Saint Germain a very long time ago, but his attributes, actions, and importance throughout history suggest he is behind many influential occultists guiding humanity to his end goal. Saint Germain is just another name of many for Godrael or Lucifer, the father of lies and of the mysteries. The threefold flame of Saint Germain is the presence of God anchored in your heart. It is the presence of God within you. The flame that burns within your heart is a cosmic seed of consciousness. Temple of Solomon, threefold flame, whatever they want to call it, it's the same thing. They know the third temple is spiritual, not physical. The very people giving churches their false doctrines about building a third temple don't believe it themselves. This central chamber, called the altar of the heart, is thus the connecting point of the mighty silver cord of light that descends from your God presence to sustain the beating of your physical heart, giving you life, purpose, and cosmic integration. The Catholic Church has been using the threefold flame for centuries in the heart of their Jesus figure. This Jesus is also the teacher of the Piscean Age and Saint Germain's holy brother. The threefold flame can be seen in many other Brother Man locations, like the Statue of Liberty. Elizabeth Clare Prophet gives us the New Age meaning of the statue. This flame of liberty inspired the building of the Statue of Liberty. This statue does not just represent the country of America, but for all who carry the threefold flame, the flame of freedom in our hearts. Even the Dallas Theological Seminary has the same threefold flame of Saint Germain. The threefold flame represents the light of Godrael, of Lucifer, who wants to be in your heart, which is supposed to be the temple of Yah. Hosea 10.2 describes the hearts of the Israelites who followed pagan gods while claiming to follow the one true God. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. Notice in Psalm 86.11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear, meaning to have reverence for thy name. Only God can unite a divided heart. America is extremely important to the brothers and to St. Germain. Samuel, Columbus, Shakespeare, Bacon. Enter St. Germain, sponsor of the United States of America. Uniting mankind as a melting pot is a brother man idea that is an inversion of what scripture tells us in Genesis 11, where God separated tribes and tongues and nations at the Tower of Babel. The same ideology shared by Nimrod is the vision of Saint Germain. His life started with secrecy, being given to, we think, the Medici family. So he learned how to, to lie at a young age to hide who he really was. Lucifer's flame has replaced the Holy Spirit of God in our hearts in the temple. Lucifer's many overshadowings always involved influential and revolutionary characters like Plato and Francis Bacon, those with great occult knowledge like Hermes and ties to royalty like the Count of St. Germain. The exact opposite way that God sent his son into the world, on a donkey. The very Pharisees prophesying a king missed him. The New Atlantis is the title of Sir Francis Bacon's utopian book that was originally called The Land of the Rosicrucians. Occult leaders of secret societies along with Sir Francis Bacon felt the New World, America, was the best chance to create the New Atlantis. Bacon described the brothers in the New Atlantis saying, quote, amongst the excellent acts of that king, one above all hath the preeminence. It was the erection and institution of an order or society, which we call Solomon's house, the noblest foundation as we think that ever was upon the earth. Elizabeth Clare Prophet describes Francis Bacon and the New Atlantis. Ben Johnson offered a toast to him in the form of a poem written in Masonic code. 
The secret message that runs through the poem shows that Francis Bacon was being honored not only on account of the anniversary of his natal day, but as the secret founder of the literary Rosy Cross, the Rosicrucian fraternity, and Masonic Brotherhood, and that his royal descent was well known to the heads of the Brotherhood. That would explain why Bacon's New Atlantis was reported to contain the key to modern Masonic rituals. It is widely accepted that America is the new Atlantis. And here we are at the last point in our chart, the new Atlantis, America. She goes on to say America is Jerusalem recovered and new Atlantis reincarnated. To answer this, we must consider four things. First of all, the role of the Masons in the American Revolution. Second, the Masonic symbology in our great seal and flag. Third, the mystery of Bruton's church in Williamsburg, Virginia. And four, the wave of religious fervor of the Great Awakening and Millennialism, all this combined to bring about the restoration of Israel and Judah in the New Atlantis. Bruton Church is a church in Williamsburg, Virginia, where a vault was buried in 1648 with anagrammatic readings on it that revealed it was Bacon's vault placed there as a monument to Brother Manry and a sign of his behind-the-scenes planning in America. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Patrick Henry went to church there when legislature was in session. George Washington called the United States the Great Brother Man Experiment. He had a lot to do with the Declaration of Independence and beginning this country. St. Germain then turned to the New World, and as he had already been working with America since its founding, he stood by George Washington throughout the Revolution, called for the signing of the Declaration of Independence and directed the writing of the Constitution. He anointed George Washington as the first president. Principles found in Plato's Republic and the book The New Atlantis by Francis Bacon outlined the foundation of the government of the U.S. The founding principles of those works were not Christian, but part of the mystery religions. Plato believed that in the utopia of the NWO, genders would be abolished. Manly P. Hall wrote in his book America's Assignment with Destiny that he believed Christopher Columbus worked with Lorenzo de' Medici and a secret society to discover America. Columbus even sailed with the Templar Order's Red Cross logo on his sails. Hall is basically saying America was known before Columbus ever came into the picture, and it always figured heavily into esoteric plans, including to create Plato's Republic or Francis Bacon's New Atlantis. America is incredibly important to Lucifer's synthesis, despite what biblical commentary wants you to believe. This is their millennial kingdom, and they've worked on it for centuries. As we are entering into the new age of Aquarius, according to the Sumerians, it was Enki is the original man of Aquarius, an otherworldly, even extraterrestrial being. We are returning to a time when Enki himself may return. According to Asphoria.org, Lord Enki is known to the new age community mostly as Saint Germain and he appears to us in many forms, one of which is the form of Lord Thoth. Those who can recognize the true message of the New World Order should know that Saint Germain, through his channeled messages, was among the first who spoke about the New World Order of the Aquarian Age that will be governed by the Ascended Masters and not by the Bankers and the Dark Brotherhood, or the Dark Occultists. You see how all of these characters and stories are the same, but just have different names? The New Age, the Age of Aquarius, the Golden Age, the Age of Enlightenment. It's the ultimate synthesis of the plan put into place as a pact on Mount Hermon by the Fallen. It has taken literally all of recorded history to reach this point. This can never happen again. This is not a historic blip or a small piece of the puzzle. This is the entirety of human history. The end of time to true believers means the end to Lucifer's kingdom and the return of Yahusha, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Judge, not the promise of a new age of enlightenment where government gets to be the judge. A new age without Jesus or without God, where Lucifer continues to play God from behind the curtain. In May of 2019, Trump tweeted, this is a bright new age, the age of enlightenment. Q Post 144 even references this new age of enlightenment. When Trump was tanking in the polls, the new age channels reported Trump would win. No one believed them until he actually did. No one thought she would lose. Trump is performing alchemy in that he is turning lead, the dark world order, to gold, the light world order. He's playing Enochian chess. The first beast to the second, dark to light. 
a Great Awakening has always accompanied spiritual revivals. This Great Awakening of Q is initiating humanity into the Age of Aquarius, or the so-called Golden Age. You can't have a Golden Age without gold. I've mentioned a worldwide financial reset backed by gold in previous videos. The key here is worldwide. How can it be worldwide? Because the Fed owns all the central banks in these countries. The Fed and the IRS. Fact. The U.S. Federal Reserve is a privately owned company sitting on its very own patch of land immune to the U.S. laws. The Dutch Central Bank recently issued a stunning warning. If the entire system collapses, gold will be needed to start over. Look what's happening around the world. We know the central bank system cannot last. Yes, the patriots are creating a new economy for the people. Gold will destroy the Fed. First Kings chapter 10 of the Bible states, the weight of the gold which Solomon received each year was 666 talents. Converted into today's measurements, that's approximately 25 tons of gold for each year of his 40 year reign. To put that into perspective, the Bible says that King Solomon had more than double the amount of the U.S. gold bullion deposits currently held in the New York Federal Reserve. The exact same phrase is in 2 Chronicles 9.13. God does not repeat himself without reason. Revelation 13.18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. The number of the beast is the number of a man. The man is Solomon and his number is 603 score and six of gold. The New Age claims that the Saint Germain World Trust is comprised of gold, silver, and precious gems. And that Saint Germain is the one behind Nisara or Jasara or the financial reset leading to presumed world peace and prosperity. Disinfo sites about Nisara and Jasara are owned by the Shrubbery family and comprise most indexed sites on Google. Trump, with the help of the light faction within the military, has done more to implement St. Germain's debt forgiveness than any other president. Nasara and Jasara will bring in a one-time debt jubilee where all debt is forgiven. The Fed controls central banks who sell your debt, student loans, and mortgages to institutions or governments, and it is on the verge of collapse thanks to Trump pushing them. No Fed, no debt. But debt is an entirely different topic for another day. But since the Fed owns the IRS, it will also supposedly be dismantled under Nasara and taxes will be returned to the people. Which is, in my opinion, what most consider the mark of the beast. I've discussed this in my previous videos, but everything we've talked about, replacing the truth with mystic teachings, is the great falling away. Apostasy. An apostasy is a rebellion and abandonment of truth. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple." And the son of perdition is not a man, it is the spirit of Belial, the spirit of Antichrist, the destroyer or the worthless one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus was talking about Judas. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas as a chariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Belial possessed Judas. The Antichrist spirit, the son of perdition, killed Jesus. Belial's long reign as the first beast of the sea, the cabal from Revelation 13, is over. The son of perdition is being revealed to the public for the first time in history. The cabal is being taken down, and all of his secrets of mind control, ritual abuse, and child sacrifices are being revealed. Even though they're being revealed, yes, that makes sense with the way that the second beast is described. However, judgment belongs to God alone, not the second beast, the light world order. There are only two choices to make in who we choose to follow. The plethora of religions based on the original lie of Lucifer, or the truth. This is the most important decision we can make. What separates the wheat from the chaff? The true believers, the ones who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus, and the fake believers, 
the ones who claim to be Christians but still follow the world and everything in it. One of the last prophecies in the book of Revelation gives us the outline of the things we must overcome in this lifetime. The beast or the dragon, that old serpent or Lucifer's image, his name, and his number. Revelation 13, 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This verse says that all people will receive a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This doesn't mean three different things. It's just different versions of the same thing. The mark is a spiritual sign that shows who you belong to. God also marks those who belong to him. Exodus 13, 9 says, And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. And Exodus 13, 16, And it shall be for a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes. Strong's Concordance shows that one of the translations for sign and token is mark. God seals his children with his mark, and the scriptures show that the mark is figurative, not literal. Like some bio RFID chip. That's a cabal brother manic lie to make the blind tares believe they see. People will no doubt be deceived when the financial reset happens because they won't be forced to get a chip. And they'll think that taking the money is okay. Of course, I don't have any details of how it'll play out. I'm not a prophet. I'm just watching the signs. Revelation 15:2 talks about those who had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name. The beast is Lucifer, Godrael, right? The angel who deceived Eve in the garden and showed her the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil. Gnosis, or salvation through knowledge, is the path that leads to death. The only true salvation is through Yahushua, Jesus Christ. We must also overcome the image of the beast. I have discussed this as well in my video, what is the image of the beast? But if you haven't seen that one, my opinion is Q fits the bill for the image. The entire world is in love with Q and the promises they prophesied of ridding the world of the evil cabal and offering peace and prosperity to everyone, ending the endless wars, things only considered miraculous. Remember how there are light and dark paths within esoteric organizations. Trump took the path JFK did. Very few have gone the light world order route. They promised judgment to those who enslaved humanity for millennia. They even say that they, and we, are the saviors of mankind. There's not going to be a second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ is you. There is only one savior and his name is Jesus Christ. Q struck like lightning at the perfect moment to create a worldwide effect that was never possible before and will never happen again. Put yourself in the shoes of your distant ancestors and how they felt during the 1890s on the cusp of the modern world seeing science progress at such an alarming rate. We take that time for granted now, and nothing we have today would be possible without all of history. Each tiny step of each era marched us steadily toward where we are now. None less important to God, and none too insignificant for Lucifer to exercise his plan. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land, every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. So the mark is the same as taking the name of the beast, which shows where your allegiance is. All of these things are important to overcome because we are bombarded from all angles all the time in his world. I discussed the importance of not taking the Lord's name in vain in my video, The Two Witnesses, and I explained that taking someone's name is a metaphor for marriage. If you take God's name, you are part of the Bride of Christ. But if you still love the world, you've taken the beast's name and are part of the Bride of Satan, or as it's called by the establishment, the Bride of the Antichrist. Which tree are you from? The olive tree? That includes the true J and Gentile believers in God and Jesus, or the Luciferian lies taught in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The number of his name is 666, possibly the reference to Solomon's gold. Brother men worship Solomon, and brother men who follow the light are the ones bringing in the financial reset backed by gold. 
The followers of the light are the military, the patriots, the ones who are doing the light world order and pretending to be the good guys, setting us free when really they're part of the second beast of revelation. Trump only has a facade of being Christian or upholding traditional values, looking like the lamb but speaking like the dragon. According to certified angel practitioner and Akashic Record consultant Jennifer Snell, quote, A few weeks ago, I was told in a message from Saint Germain that Donald Trump was an aspect of Saint Germain, just as Christopher Columbus and so many before him were. According to her, when she was channeling, he said, President Donald Trump is part of the divine plan for the new earth. His energy is that of Saint Germain and he is ushering in the golden age, the age of enlightenment, Saint Germain or Lucifer has been working towards for centuries. By controlling both sides of the conflict, he achieves the desired goal. This is why the two beasts of Revelation work together. This is the reason it appears Trump is a hero and is taking down the evil cabal or the first beast, since the second beast exercises all the power of the first. No, there is no making America great again, for it was never great. It was founded as the amalgamation of the mystery schools. An archived interview from 1976 between Harold Wallace Rosenthal and Walter White sums up the point for this video. Mr. Rosenthal was a U.S. Senator's aide and worked for the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. He was killed by a terrorist attack in Turkey months after this interview. We Jays continue to be amazed with the ease by which Christian Americans have fallen into our hands. While the naive Americans wait for Khrushchev to bury them, we have taught them to submit to our every command. This submission has been made possible by the gradual adoption of Talmudic concepts as being Christian, thus producing a Jayish society. It's what Rabbi Martin Siegel called the Jayization of Christianity. When asked how a nation could be captured without their knowing it, Mr. Rosenthal attributed this victory to absolute control of the media. He boasted of Jayish control of all of the media. Any newspaper which refused to acquiesce to controlled news was brought to its knees by withdrawing advertising. Failing in this, the Jays stopped the supply of newspaper and ink. It's a very simple matter, he stated. Rosenthal, in exposing certain aspects of the inner invisible world of Jayery, revealed the modes and tactics Jays have used in destroying Christian civilization and covertly attaining control over our lives and governments. The result has been a hidden tyranny upon us like the tyranny waged against the saints by the red beast system of revelation referred to as Mystery Babylon. We've just seen the evolution of the original lie from the garden from the beginning to the present day. So what do we do? I mean, the ideal answer is to either reject this godlike state by setting up our own governments or opposing the state politically, setting up our own banking system and so on. But we passed that point long ago. All we can do is reject it passively by exposing its false godhood. It has become increasingly difficult to free ourselves from the order as it is constantly trying to mold us into the slaves it wants. Those who are the children of God are of the kingdom of God where he is the king in our lives. If he's not your king, you are not of his kingdom. We are free. Remember that John 8, 32 says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Everyone under the confusion of Lucifer is in chains. By that definition, everyone in the establishment hierarchy are slaves. They have all the money, all the land, all the fame and all the power, but they are the slaves. We have something they never will, freedom. Don't be afraid of deprogramming and don't be afraid of questioning God. Remember, truth is truth. It can withstand questioning. Most people run into slides, dialectics, disinfo programs, spoon feeder agents, smoke screens, controlled oppositions or flat out lies that throw a wrench in people's search. But before throwing out the baby with the bathwater, assuming that the almighty truth contradicts a new piece of information, make sure that new piece is true. It is more likely that you've been deceived by the countless organizations working tirelessly to destroy God. That brings me to how much confusion might be felt on your journey of breaking out. But don't lose hope. God is not the author of confusion. With as much time, energy, and effort as the cabal and the alliance, the establishment have made to destroy and kill God, ask yourself, why? Why has the world so desperately tried to kill something that they want you to believe doesn't exist in the first place? An anonymous quote sums this up best. You can demonize the truth and bury it in the deepest pit of hell. That still won't make it a falsity. And someone who is intellectually honest will inevitably find it again. Thank you all for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.